Okay. Yeah. ASAP. Yeah. Bye-bye. Brandon? Yes, ma'am. Hi. So I'm getting to you very quickly because I know you're at work. Yes, ma'am. All right. So how are things going? It's going very good. I'm blessed right now. I uh, finally got uh, this other job that I've been wanting. I, it's my second week already. Okay. And so you're still doing your meetings and doing everything you need to do to stay clean and sober? Yes, ma'am. I've been doing three classes every week, uh, once a week, and then I just got to go for it with Ms. Galindo. All right. So what type of work do you do? Uh, metal work right now. I'm in a, in a, in a warehouse. We, we're cutting sheet metal and all that, uh, aluminum angles and all that for buildings. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Do not backslide because it's easy once you start meeting with people at work and they want to, you know, hey, let's just go out for a drink. Once you start yes, doing that, it's easy to backslide. So don't do that, okay? Yes, ma'am. And remember, if you need anything or you feel like probation is not addressing something with you, just uh, mm -hmm. let the court know. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I had a question. If you could help me out. Um, I got hired through a temp service, and they did a background check. I know I'm on deferred probation, but uh, this company that I'm at doesn't hire felons, but it, uh, the charge that I'm on still popped up. I don't know if there's like a letter they can get that. Say, stating that I'm still um, on, I'm on deferred probation, that I'm not a felon yet, a convicted felon? Well, what you'll have to do is you'll have to get an attorney to do that. But if you want them to call into the court, yes, I'd be more than been happy to tell them that you're on deferred adjudication, but that's all I will be able to tell them. I would yes, not be able to advocate for you. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, because uh, I think they hire you on like after three months. So after that, uh, I'll be getting in touch with you. Okay. All right. Keep up the good work. Do not backslide, okay? I will not, Ms. Boyd. I've been seeing you on TikTok a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even... And you know what's so funny? I don't even know how to do TikTok, Instagram, or any of that. I guess I need You're to learn. There, though. You're on there. I'll say what? <laughs> okay. All right. Have a great day okay. and uh, be safe at work. I know dealing with that. Sometimes accidents happen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, because you know what a guy told me who was, he's an attorney, but he mm -hmm. decided he didn't want to be an attorney anymore. He's a carpenter now. Yes, he lost one of his fingers. He said, you're not a carpenter until you lose at least one finger. So yes, don't be a carpenter. <laughs> Just work with cheap metal, okay? I won't, man. Have a blessed day. Thank you. All right, you too. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Yeah, Zach? Yes, Judge. Uh, I want to tell you about this relationship I was in. Oh, okay. Let's hear it, Judge. <laughs> I was in this relationship with this guy. Loved him and everything, but we ended up separating. Okay. And the reason why we separated is because I was into my career. You know, I couldn't be a meteorologist, but, you know, I could try to protect people from different storms, right? Okay. So... I'm trying to tell everybody this big storm is coming. Nobody was paying attention to me. But yeah. then I meet my ex again. Oh, wow. And I said, look, we need your help. Do you, can you help us? And guess what? We're chasing storms. And this right. big twister is coming. Got you. 
<laughs> we survived. You did. But oh. my problem was in the back of my mind, I always remembered the twister that happened with my family. Thank you for helping me out with the, mm -hmm. the name. <laughs> and you know, my sister, a house fell on her. Is that right? <laughs> yes. And some girl comes by. We didn't even do probate. And guess what she does? I can't imagine. Some other lady comes up and tells her, oh, you can take her property. And she ends up taking my sister's red shoes. That was, wow, that is, we're like layers deep now, Joyce. Oh, yeah. Dorothy from the thing. Now. Wow. You never seen Twisted. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Ellen Hunt, which Bill Pack. Come on, Joyce. Just... We have anything today, you really seen? No, we have not. This, uh, can I watch your ticket? This is injustice, Joyce. <laughs> Yes. 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 Well, let's let's do it. Yes, if you'll have them pull the file in the back, and also ask them to pull pull the file for Brandon De Hoyos. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else here who's on the docket today? All right. Could I see the file on? Is there a file there for Malik Lapper? Sure. All right. Just give us a moment. And you are here. Yes. And while you're back there, if you could tell them the, to bring the Malik Lampkin file. Yes. We have many people who are on staff here today mm -hmm. who are not being paid, but they're just on the staff. So is anybody going to watch the Super Bowl? I'm like, mm. yeah. Yeah. Best finger food. Oh, there you go. There was some lady who's who showed something that's sort of like a hack, I guess. So she would take the drinks out of the carton, get a tin pan, put it in the middle, put the dip, and then in the cardboard boxes, put all the chips or whatever. And I kept thinking, isn't that dirty? She didn't even line the. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't either. But you know what, Zach? As you wish. <laughs> Robert, Zach hasn't seen. That's my favorite quote from Princess Bride. That's all. <laughs> Before Judge says it. Robert, he hasn't seen Princess Bride. He hasn't seen Gremlins. Assuming facts, Gremlins, evidence, Your Honor, there's nothing to support this account. I've almost, you know, the problem is, Judge, I've seen it so often, I can't remember all the details. Yeah. He has it, Robert, Princess Bride, Gremlins, Rambo, The that's Warriors. Not, that's all my He cool. hasn't seen any of this. Yeah. Wait, these are, yeah. this, this is not, well, not all of that. Have you seen Animal House? I have, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No? Yes, I, yes, this is not there. And he has not seen the cult classic Leprechaun, <laughs> the very first worst. <laughs> See, and you know what? There are certain movies. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, you can't believe everything you hear. Yeah. yeah. He is way younger than Barney. Yeah. He is way younger than Barney. Wait, he's like this Barney. You talking about the purple dinosaur? Or okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, he's seen none of this. And that see. Some of that is true. Robert, he's the person that if he catches a leprechaun, he's going to ask him for his goal. Me, I've seen the movie The Leprechaun. I'm just like, keep your goal. Just, you know, go on your merry way. Thank you very much. All right. So could uh, both parties, state defense, have you all looked over the uh, jury charge? And I believe everything was put in there that should be put in there. Yeah. Speaking of that, what today? We're talking, I looked at her and said, oh, so she got the Jan Brady syndrome. And she looked at me like, she didn't know what I saw her. Who's Jan Brady? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Judge, it's all those young DAs, you know? I just, <laughs> where do they find these people? <laughs> all right, so we're going to go on the, have you all looked at the jury charge, both parties? Uh, Diana, we're going to go on the record, record briefly. Uh, court is calling 2021 CR 10130, State of Texas versus Isaiah 
Var you? Var, var you? Uh, can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Allen Jackson, state. Defense. And are you Isaiah Varu? All right. Have both parties had a chance to review the jury charge? State. Yes, Your Honor. Defense. Yes, Your Honor. Any objection to the jury charge? State. No, Your Honor. Defense. Not to the jury. All right. Thank you. Oh, that's for May. Okay. So who's here on Jarius Logan? Yes. Yeah, why do I have this file? Okay, let me see. Yeah, this is done. I guess it was attached to another file. I had Gardea, Judge. You got there? Yeah. All right, Jasmine Hunt. Is she here? She's in the building. I, I, I'm going to call mental health to want to make ready to bring her here. Oh, just whenever you all are done over there, you can bring her here. We're going to do opening statements first. I'm sorry, closing arguments on this case at 930. You want, you want her to vote how we already tested Judge right now and finish it with her first and then bring her over here? No, I mean, if she's here and she's ready to go now, we'll take care of it now. Well, not right now. <laughs> That's she is. Okay. Thanks, Laura. I'm sorry, one what? I have one motion with that. Oh, well, let's go on the record with that. Uh, defense? Your Honor, at this time, the defense is requesting a directed verdict with regards to count four of the jury charge and indictment. I believe the state of Texas failed to prove a crucial element when it comes to sexual assault. Meaning that the, uh, the complaining witness nor any of the other witnesses that uh, specifically described or gave any evidence to be able to testify actually be able to corroborate um, the cause, the penetration of the sexual organ of Joe, a child who was younger than 17 years of age. We did, we did establish that, um, however, that it was done by Isaiah Barju's sexual organ. By my memory and my co-counsel's memory of the testimony from the complaining witness, she described it as vaginal intercourse. However, I do not believe that that is going to be sufficient to be able to show that it was with um, my client's sexual organ. So for those reasons, I am asking for a directed verdict on count four. All right. State. Yes, Your Honor. At this point, I disagree. All that is needed to go past the directed verdict is a scintilla. She said vaginal intercourse. She described that they had full on sex, as she said, multiple occasions on multiple times. All right. Okay. Thank you. May I respond? Yes. While that may be correct, as um, Ms. Jackson had spoke about in her questioning of this witness in more dire, and it was actually brought up by the same nurse, and it's the same nurse and the forensic examiner, multiple people, especially teenagers, have different meanings for different words. And we've actually seen that specifically in this case, for instance, text method, text versus messaging. So with that in mind, this witness needed to actually say it was done by my client's sexual organ in order to have a scintilla of evidence to go forward to the jury on this specific count. She described vaginal intercourse. She used it several times, the understood and your general meaning of that is penis in the vagina, Your Honor. All right, all right, just have a seat. I will think about that. Let me write something on this other case. That's done. Okay. All right, Lampkin. Who's here on Lampkin? All right, if you'll come forward.
Okay, on this case, what are we here for? Your Honor, um, originally we were gonna do a compliance hearing um, back in, I believe it was December. We were opting to try to get his GPS monitor off. Mm -hmm. um, however, at this point, I don't think that that would be a good idea. Okay. Um, since December, there's been some mental health issues um, with Mr. Lampkin, and he's been in and out of treatment. Mm -hmm. um, so we just wanted to give the court an update on where he was and um, have a couple of things that we want to, we want to do. Yes, Your Honor. We were originally scheduled for yesterday. Uh, I didn't answer the court that he was in, if I may pretend to the court at Centennial Behavioral. He did get that discharge information, Judge. Mm -hmm. um, according to his outpatient plan, uh, we've been wanting uh, coordination with Center for Healthcare Services um, to get him stabilized on potential med case management services, Judge. Mm -hmm. I spoke with probation, and that's something that uh, we're going to hopefully work towards is to linking him up with Center for Healthcare. Maybe some of these concerns, and hopefully he won't have to be going to a uh, Methodist or behavioral hospital on, on issues. But I'm, I'm glad the court brought this issue to light because it seems like he was having some issues and I'm glad it's bring, being brought here so we can squash out and see what we need to do to get him some help. All right. Your Honor, I would like to point out that this, at this point in time, he is not being supervised by a mental health unit um, because he was in compliance with everything and we didn't know that there was an issue. Mm -hmm. So we would like to amend conditions for him to have an evaluation with our mental health unit. And as you know, they work hand in hand with the Center for Healthcare Services so that we can get him stabilized on his meds and um, be supervised the way that he should be. We have no objection to that, Judge. The court and I would also ask, Your Honor, if um, you can impose that that would happen as soon as possible. All right, Mr. Lampkin, how are things going with you? Uh, All right, so here's the thing. Whenever there are some issues that occur with you, talk to your probation officer. If you feel like they're not addressing it, you can come into court, you understand? All right, uh, Ms. Abrams, she's gonna let you know how to contact your probation officer. But if there is a mental health <laughs> issue or if there's something you feel like that probation is not, officer is not addressing, you can come into the courtroom. I'll give you my information too so you can come. And counsel, will you be able to stay on the case? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I don't mind staying on it just to assist him should any matters arise. And I'll give him and his family members here my contact info so they can always reach out to me too. All right. And so we'll make sure you remain appointed on the case and you can, I know that usually in Judge Carruthers Court, they have updates ever so often. That's right. And the attorney who's appointed get paid for those updates. I believe usually the payment is paid as a motion to revoke. Uh -huh. So... Well, I'm with the public defender, so I don't have to, I have to get paid the same. Okay, yeah, awesome. No worries. <laughs> so if we could, let's uh, recall this case and three months to see how he's doing. Yes, Your Honor. And at that time, if there are some issues that you have, you can let us know. But we'll bring you back in three months. And let me give you a date. Yes, Your Honor. Let's uh, put it for April... 29th. Yes, Your Honor. Sounds, sounds like a plan. We surely appreciate the court's time and for addressing this matter, Judge, and you know, we're hoping he gets better. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to amend conditions. Sure. I'll ask that the Mickey valuation be expedited. We'll continue with the GPS, but once you're stabilized and everything is okay, your counsel can always come back for me to consider removal of the GPS. Yes, he can come back, but I think it's probably best for him to just, in April, we can see how you're doing. And if everything is going well, I'll strongly consider removal of it. Do you understand? All right. Is there anything else that you want to discuss, Mr. Lampkin? All right. How are things going now? Are you living with relatives? And how's that going? I kind of want to so I kind of want to move back in on my own state. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know what? It, you can discuss that with your family members, but it's probably best that you say, stay with someone from now just until everything is back on routine. All right, so there's the reset form. Once you, once he signs that, he is excused. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Oh, yes. Have you pulled your copies uh, off? Um, uh, uh, yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. I'm like, my memory, I don't know, isn't as good as it was. That's okay. I consider the best of us. Okay. You are a judge. All right. Best of luck with the remaining jury trial, Judge. And oh. see you next time. All right. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming down. Oh, yes. No problem, Your Honor. Uh, you. All right. Thank you. No, it's not here either. We're about to do closing arguments. Well, okay. Let me see what I can do. Maybe I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the family for Lampkin, have they already left? Hi, is there anything you needed to let the court know? Oh, come forward. Because it's going to take a team effort to make sure he does well on probation. I'm yes. ex-military, so we got it pretty much under control on that. Okay. I was wondering if we could get, uh, I know you already made a ruling on it. I was hoping uh, Malik would have made a uh, comment to you that we, if, if we could get a couple of hours extra on the monitor because we're having to take him to all these different uh, Sure, can uh, I see the phone? And we make sure that he's, you know, charging it and everything. Thank you. But we're just having a problem uh, with the hours of seven to six. And we, I wanted Malik to tell you that because we're taking him to all these, uh, doctor's appointments and we have a new psychiatrist appointment down on Commerce Street and we're kind of like everybody's running ragged taking so if we could get a couple of extra hours okay eight o'clock all fine. right why don't we do this uh probation are you okay with his GPS partial and for medical appointments and mental health treatments so what that would mean is Whatever time his medical appointment is or mental health treatment is, he can go and you can take him. So by me just saying partial GPS for medical appointments and mental health treatments, they will know. If there is an issue counsel with pretrial services or probation that's monitoring this, you can just let the court know. Yes. Okay. We're having to use all kinds of people to bury him around, you know. Okay. That's the main thing. All right. Thank you for letting me know that. Thank you. That's good. And then... I'm waiting for the other attorney to bring his client over. Is Gadea here? All right. Could I see the file on Gadea? No. All right. On Gadea, is this a surety bond? PR? It's a uh, one one seven zero five nine nine. I'm thinking she may have given you that wrong one. Jarvis. By mistake, yeah. Okay. This one is. <laughs> All right, so it's a surety. Yep, 
What is a bond forfeiture warranty? No, I mean, is it is it a PR bond or was it with a surety? It was a PR bond. Okay. All right. So is she uh, with Criminal Trial Division or Family Law? CTD. All right. Excuse me. Do one of you mind calling uh, Hank or another prosecutor to come down? All right. Thank you. And then... Where is she? She's on the front. Okay. All right. Deputy Laura? Yes, sir. Uh, she has a warrant, but we're going to take care of it today, but they need to secure her because those are the rules. So if you'll let her, let her know that. Thank you, lady. Um, are you in the building? Okay. Is Daniel here? I'm just waiting for one chair. Okay. Um, she, the file she just... Uh, okay, I'll call Daniel. Um, okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh, I didn't eat. I didn't file it back there if you want me to. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. He is here. He's out in the hall. I can bring him in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't let's have a file in the back. Yes, ma'am. And bring the file up. Please. Okay. Hey, Dale. Okay, hey, there's ones when you guys come down. Okay, great. Thank you. Bye -bye. Either Daniel or Jason's on their way down, Judge. All right, thank you. Oh, uh, Allie? No. Could you let them know what the file is so they can bring the file down with them? What's their file, Judge? Uh, Student. Oh, he needs to come in and they're they going to have to take him to custody. Yeah, we we don't approach when people are not present. No. Donna, can you do me a favor? Uh, it's okay. Yes, I think all I had yesterday because I had a bucket in the morning. <laughs> you saw it, Judge, right? <laughs> well, you you remember when we were in the office, his wife for his uh, birth month would do um, Leo Palooza, and every day would be a different dessert. They were very good. <laughs> Jason? Yes, can I see y'all in the back? All right, everyone, just give me a moment.
What are you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was making sure that I got the right act. So, Council, um, what's going to end up happening is I believe they're going to have to take her down to satellite. And so we'll. Don't say no if you don't die. All right, so I'm going to set the bond at 5000 So on Gardia, I'm going to set the bond at $5,000. I'm going to give her a PR bond. Waive the fees. All right, Ms. Gardia. Hi. All right, Ms. Gardia, this is what's going to end up happening. I'm going to set your bond at $5,000. I'm going to give you a PR bond and waive the fees. And I'm going to order that you continue with uh, the Center for Healthcare Services. Is there anything else? I think so, Your Honor. I'll keep the court posted on progress. All right. So, Ms. Gardia, even though you're in handcuffs and in custody, what's going to end up happening is your attorney is going to do a walkthrough with you. So you'll be released today and you won't be going to the Bear County Jail. Okay, you understand? So you're not going to be going to Bear County Jail, but the problem is, right, they're going to have to take you back this way because you have to remain in custody until the PR bond issue is, is taken care of. But your attorney is going to go down there. They're going to take you down to the PR bond offices, which is, I believe, in the basement. And your attorney will be there and you'll be released from there. And if there is an issue, counsel, just let me know. And I'm going to reset this case. And you're going to have to make sure that you appear in court. You understand? All right. So I'm going to reset this case for February 20th. Is that enough time for everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. And Deputy Mejia, if you can make sure she gets to satellite, and then she'll be released from there. And Diana, update. Looking up there. No. Okay. What the bond was set for? Oh, I'll hit it. May we approach? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. Thank you. Um, good morning, Your Honor. All right, good morning. Um, we have a jury in the hallway, so. Yes, ma'am. I'm here on Torrance Knowles. Where is he? He, has, he is currently in the back. It's the motion to set bond, and he just turned himself in. The original, that motion has been filed. All right, so if you all uh, will take this to Judge Nahara. Judge Nahara can hear it today. Thank you. All right, as long as you all have the motion file, which you do. And if you'll get with the clerk, they'll have that taken care of with Judge Nahara. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you. Okay, sure. Yes, I'm also into 1.5. Are they going right now? 
go back upstairs. <laughs> go back upstairs. I can, uh, I can tell him. Well, on a, honestly, with Judge Nahara, he may not need Mr. Knowles. He'll just probably need you all. Yeah. And I mean, we can keep them here if you like for a little bit. Do you want to go? I'll give you my phone number. Okay. Call me. They got my number down there too. Okay. And I'll come down if they need me. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're back on the record. See, I say back on the record, then I pause. <laughs> We're back on the record in 2021 CR 10130 state of Texas versus Isaiah for you. All right. So defense, uh, the court has considered uh, your motion uh, that will be denied. You're welcome. My understanding is that the jurors are ready Are both parties ready to proceed with closing arguments. I know your honor, I just need one moment while Zach comes back in the bathroom. Okay. And Your Honor, while we're doing that moment, can you just go ahead and flip over the screen so I can check to make sure my part gets? Yes. Thank you for letting me set up. Thank you. Uh, if you'll go in the back, the clerk is back there. She has it. Or is she still? Oh, no, she's right here. Are you really in room three? <laughs> you know, now I'm, you know, I remember you telling me I'm in room eight. I, I searched high and low. You said, ah, I found you. Yes. You know, let me pull it up. Thank you. All right, and let me see. We're ready. All right, for the jury. All right, everyone, please be seated. So there were no issues with parking, correct? All right, awesome. All right, what's going to happen now is I'm going to read to you what's called the charge of court. It's the jury charge. You don't have to memorize it. You will have it back to you, back with you when you begin your deliberations. Members of the jury, the defendant, Isaiah Varu, stands charged in count one, two, and three of the indictment with the offenses of indecency with a child by sexual contact alleged to have been committed on or about the 15th day of June, 2020 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant Isaiah Varu stands charged in count four of the indictment with the offense of sexual assault of a child alleged to have been committed on or about the first day of September, 2020 in Bear County, Texas. 
to these offenses, the defendant has pleaded not guilty. One, our law provides that a person commits the offense of indecency with the child by sexual contact if with a child younger than 17 years of age, whether the child is of the same or opposite sex, and regardless of whether the person knows the age of the child at the time of the offense, the person engages in sexual contact with the child or causes the child to engage in sexual contact. Two, our law provides that a person commits the offense of sexual assault of a child if regardless of whether the person knows the age of the child at the time of the offense, the person intentionally or knowingly causes the penetration of the sexual organ of a child by any means. Three, child means a person younger than 17 years of age. Sexual contact means any touching by a person, including touching through clothing of the breast or any part of the genitals of a child or any touching of any part of the body of a child, including touching through clothing with any part of the genitals of a person, if committed with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person. Four. A person acts intentionally or with intent with respect to the nature of his conduct or to the result of his conduct when it is his conscious objective or desire to engage in the conduct or cause the result. A person acts knowingly or with knowledge with respect to the nature of his conduct or to circumstances surrounding his conduct when he is aware of the nature of his conduct or that the circumstances exist. A person acts knowingly or with knowledge with respect to a result of his conduct when he is aware that his conduct is reasonably certain to cause the result. Five, you are instructed that a victim of an alleged indecency with a child offense or an alleged sexual assault of a child offense may choose a pseudonym to be used instead of the victim's name to designate the victim and all public files and records concerning the alleged offense. Pseudonym means a set of initials or a fictitious name chosen by a victim to designate the victim mm -hmm. and all public files and records concerning the offense. Mm -hmm. Six, the phrase on or about means that the state is not required to prove that the alleged offense happened on that exact date. Our law provides that the time of the offense alleged in each count in the indictment must be some date anterior to the presentment of the indictment and not so remote that the prosecution of the offense is barred by limitation. There is no limitation period for the offenses of indecency with a child by sexual contact and sexual assault of a child. Therefore, it is sufficient if the state proves that the offense alleged in each count was committed sometime before November 8, 2021, which is the date the indictment was filed. Seven, count one. Now, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about the 15th day of June 2020 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Isaiah Beru, did intentionally or knowingly engage in sexual contact with Joe, a pseudonym, a female child younger than 17 years, by touching the breast of Joe, a pseudonym, with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person, then you will find the defendant, Isaiah Bergeau, guilty of the offense of indecency with a child by sexual contact as charged in count one of the indictment. If you do not so find beyond a reasonable doubt, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you will find the defendant, Isaiah Bergeau, not guilty of count one. Eight, count two. Now, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about the 15th day of June, 2020 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Isaiah Beru, did intentionally or knowingly engage in sexual contact with Joe, a pseudonym, a female child younger than 17 years, by touching part of the genitals of Joe, a pseudonym, with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person, then you will find the defendant, Isaiah Beru, guilty of the offense of indecency with a child by sexual contact as charged in count two of the indictment. If you do not so find beyond a reasonable doubt, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you will find the defendant, Isaiah Berju, not guilty of count two. Nine, 
count three. Now, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about the 15th day of June, 2020 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Isaiah Veru, did intentionally or knowingly engage in sexual contact with Joe, a pseudonym, a female child younger than 17 years by causing Joe, a pseudonym, to touch part of the genitals of Isaiah Verju with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person, then you will find the defendant, Isaiah Verju, guilty of the offense of indecency with a child by sexual contact as charged in count three of the indictment. If you do not so find beyond a reasonable doubt, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you will find the defendant, Isaiah Verju, not guilty of count three. Count four. Now, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about the first day of September 2020 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Isaiah Verju, did intentionally or knowingly cause the penetration of the sexual organ of Joe, a pseudonym, a child who was younger than 17 years of age, and not the spouse of Isaiah Verju by Isaiah Verju's sexual organ, then you will find the defendant, Isaiah Verju, guilty of the offense of sexual assault of a child as charged in count four in the indictment. If you do not so find beyond a reasonable doubt, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you will find the defendant, Isaiah Verju, not guilty of count four. 11, your verdict on each count must be unanimous. If there is evidence presented of more than one alleged instance that could constitute an offense committed by the defendant, if any, as alleged in such count, you are instructed that your verdict on that count must be unanimous about which specific instance, if any, constituted the commission of the offense alleged in that count. Evidence of any other alleged acts of misconduct by the defendant against the complainant in this case is not to be considered unless you believe those acts, if any, were committed beyond a reasonable doubt. With regards to those other acts, if any, you are instructed that said evidence was admitted, if it was, only for the purpose of showing the state of mind of the defendant and the complainant and the previous and subsequent relationship between the defendant and the complainant, if it does, and for no other purpose. Our law provides a defendant may testify in his own behalf if he elects to do so. This, however, is a right accorded a defendant, and in the event he elects not to testify, that fact cannot be taken as a circumstance against him. In this case, the defendant has elected to not to testify, and you are instructed that you cannot and must not refer or allude to that fact throughout your deliberations or take it into consideration for any purpose whatsoever as a circumstance against him. You're instructed that you must not communicate with or provide any information to anyone or receive any information from anyone by any means about this case. You may not use any electronic device or media such as telephone, cell phone, smartphone, iPhone, Blackberry, iPad, tablet or computer, the internet, any internet service or any text or instant messaging service or any social media platform, internet chat room, blog or website to include, but not limited to Google, Facebook, MySpace, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter or X to communicate with anyone any information or receive any information from anyone about this case or to con conduct any research about this case until I accept your verdict. Written statements made by a witness to investigators or other officers or police reports made by officers and tendered by the prosecution to the defense for purposes of cross-examination are not part of the evidence unless introduced in evidence. Many times statements and reports may be marked with an exhibit number, but are neither offered nor received in evidence. I can send only statements and reports received in evidence to the jury room. You are instructed that the statements of counsel made during the course of trial or during the argument, if not supported by evidence, 
or statements of law made by counsel, if not in harmony with the law, as stated to you by the court in these instructions are to be wholly disregarded. You must disregard any comment or statement made by the court during the trial or in these instructions, which may seem to indicate an opinion with respect to any fact, item of evidence, or verdict to be reached in this case. No such indication is intended. You are instructed that the grand jury indictment is not evidence of guilt. It is the means whereby a defendant is brought to trial in a felony prosecution. It is not evidence, nor can it be considered by you in passing judgment upon whether this defendant is guilty or not guilty. During your deliberations in this case, you must not consider, discuss, nor relate any matters not in evidence before you. You should not consider nor mention any personal knowledge or information you may have about any fact or person connected with this case, which is not shown by the evidence. You are instructed that you are not to let bias, prejudice, or sympathy play any part in reaching a verdict in this case. After argument of counsel, you will retire to the jury room, select your own presiding juror and proceed with your deliberations. After you have reached a unanimous verdict, the presiding juror will certify, certify thereto by filling in the appropriate forms attached to this charge and signing his or her name as presiding juror. You are the exclusive judges of the facts proved, of the credibility of the witnesses, and of the weight to be given the testimony, but you are bound to receive the law from the court, which is herein given to you, and be governed by that law. In order to return a verdict, each juror must agree to that verdict, but jurors have a duty to consult each other and to deliberate with a view to reaching unanimous agreement if that can be done without violence to individual judgment. A unanimous vote means all 12 jurors must agree. Each juror must decide the case for himself, but only after an impartial consideration of the evidence with his fellow jurors. In the course of deliberations, a juror should not hesitate to re-examine his own views and change his opinion if convinced it is erroneous. However, no juror should surrender his honest conviction as to the weight or effect of the evidence solely because of the opinion of his fellow jurors or for the mere purpose of returning a verdict. All persons are presumed to be innocent and no person may be convicted of an offense unless each element of the offense is proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The fact that a person has been arrested, confined or indicted for uh, otherwise charged with the offense gives rise to no inference of guilt at his trial. The law does not require a defendant to prove his innocence or produce any evidence at all. The presumption of innocence alone is sufficient to acquit the defendant unless the jurors are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt of the defendant's guilt after careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence in the case. The prosecution has the burden of proving the defendant guilty, and it must do so by proving each and every element of the offense charge beyond a reasonable doubt. And if it fails to do so, you must acquit the defendant. It is not required that the prosecution prove guilt beyond all possible doubt. It is required that the prosecution's proof excludes all reasonable doubt concerning the defendant's guilt. In the event you have a reasonable doubt as to the defendant's guilt, after considering all the evidence before you and these instructions, you will acquit him and say by your verdict, not guilty. Suitable forms for your verdict are attached to the charge for your convenience, if you care to use them, but they are not intended to suggest to you in any way what your verdict should be, and you may or may not, as you see fit, make use of them. At any rate, your verdict must be in writing and signed by your presiding juror. Your only duty at this time is to determine whether the defendant is guilty under the indictment in this cause, and you must restrict your deliberations to the issue of whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty and nothing else. After you have retired to the jury room, no one has any authority to communicate with you except the officer who has you in charge. Do not attempt to talk to the officer or anyone else concerning any questions you may have, 
Instead, address your question to the court in writing. If you want to communicate with the court, notify the bailiff. Any and all communications relative to the case must be written, prepared by the presiding juror, and submitted to the court through the bailiff. Respectfully submitted, Judge Stephanie Boyd, 187 District Court, Bear County, Texas, and suitable forms are attached. State, are you ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. All right, you may, get, you may begin. Just one second, let me just move this real quick, Judge. May it please the court, Your Honor. I denied it because I was embarrassed and I could have done more to prevent it. I'm sure there's more I could have said. You're gonna see in these instructions that the judge just read to you, right? Counts one, two, counts three and four, okay? You're not gonna find the word motive and you're not gonna find the word consent. You know why you're not gonna find those words? Because of statements like that from children, okay? The law is designed to prevent kids from feeling that way. It's not about what she feels that she could have done more or there's more that she could have said. She is a child. That too, in this packet, is defined. This is not language that the judge drafted up or that defense and state wordsmith. This is the law. She's under the age of 17. She cannot consent. This is not a case about consent or motivation. He was the 22, 23 year old adult. She was the 14 or 15 year old child, okay? And in defense's cross of the complaint, they said, oh, motivation. And of course, without missing a beat, the complainant quickly clarified, right, motivation to finally speak the truth, right? Finally tell what actually happened. But let's get a quick kind of motivation profile, right? Of the people you heard from, right? Judges made it clear, it comes from the box, right? You can probably infer that both mothers, right? You're from the complainant's mother, defendant's mother. They love their respective children, right? You have motivations. I guess with respect to the expert, came in and talked about extraction. There's quote, varying degrees of success with extraction, right? You heard that. You heard from the sexual assault nurse examiner. You heard from the detective, right? Their motivation is just talk about the overall context of child sexual assault cases, what happened here. But let's talk about the complaint, right? Let's talk about Ava, who got up on the stand. And you would think, right, if you heard nothing from that box, if you didn't hear a single word, you would think, this is the paradox, that she would have all the motivation in the world to lie, right? Think about it in just three layers. When talking about the sexual assault, she got teary, kind of hard to speak, kind of hard to follow her. She talks about losing her sister. That was even tougher, right? Even harder to understand what she was talking about. Real teary, really, really hard to go through that. But then she talks about losing her nephew, Nico, and she barely intelligible. Lip was quivering so much, I could barely make a word out, and I was sitting right here. Real motivation is saying, you know what? Hey, this was four years ago. Hey, guys, this never happened. Instead... This is a young woman that got up on the stand and talked about how she was touched on the boobs and the butt over her clothes, talking about how his penis was hard. He came in my mouth. I gagged and I had to spit it out. What happened next? Well, actual. Actual? Yeah, vaginal intercourse. More than once? Yes. And at the end, she said, I thought it would be blamed for everything. And we're asking you not to do that today. All right, defense. Oh. Oh, Every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Our story together started on Wednesday morning with jury selection. 
we talked with you, we couldn't go into the details of what was going to happen with the panel, because at that point in time, we cannot get into the evidence. But I spoke with you, Ms. Jackson spoke with you about different things that we expected, different issues and problems we expected to see with the case. Talk to you about uh, teenagers. What are teenagers like? What are the, some of the things you see with teeners, teenagers? Allie spoke with you about victims. How do you expect a victim to be able to present to you when they testify? We spoke a little bit about social media, how everybody always has their phone on them and the things that people will post and discuss. We also talked to you, or I spoke to you about proving a negative. How do I prove to you a negative if it did not exist? And lastly, we spoke a lot about who is on trial today. Who is on trial today is the state of Texas and their case. They bear the burden of proof to prove each and every one of the elements and each and every one of the counts beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, in this jury instruction you got from the judge, which you get to take that back there with you, you did not need to memorize this. If while you guys are deliberating, you ever have any questions, this is your rule book to be able to take back or you'll have it back there to be able to refer to it saying, what is it that I'm supposed to be looking at it? What am I allowed to consider? You're going to be looking at and talking about my client's constitutional rights. He has the right to remain silent. He has the right not to testify. He has the right to be represented by an attorney, which that was me. He has the right to the jury trial. And then he has the right to a fair jury trial. Lastly, he has that very important right, and we discussed it a lot Wednesday morning, to confront the witnesses. We talked about in a case, especially a case of this serious nature, why it is so very important to, for him to be given that opportunity to question and confront the accusers. Now let's talk a little bit about the admitted evidence. You have that you're gonna take back there with you, the picture of Ava. That picture was admitted into evidence by the state of Texas. You are also gonna have the consent to search form for Ava's cell phone. That was admitted by me. So that way you can establish the date that that was signed and what property was taken into custody by the San Antonio Police Department. You're also going to have the testimony of Ava, her mother Yolanda, Detective Mendez, the forensic SANE nurse uh, Annette, the computer expert David Gallant, and then lastly, Isaiah's mother Maribel came in to testify for you to give you information about this case and this investigation. The evidence that was not admitted, now this is very crucial and Judge Boyd talks about it in the jury charge. The evidence that was not admitted is not something that you get to take back there with you. We're talking about the detective's report. She described it as a prosecution guide. Because that was not admitted into evidence, you do not get to take that back there. However, what you do take back there is your memory of what the detective talked about on the stand. Same for the Selbright report. Detective Mendez says she reviewed the Selbright report. You do not get the report to be able to take back there with you for you to review yourself. But again, you have the information from Detective Mendez. You have the text messages from Ava's phone. Again, those don't come back there. But what you do have is Detective Mendez saying that she reviewed the Selbright report and there were no messages of a sexual flirtation between Isaiah and Ava that was discovered, as well as there was no text messages that she read where Isaiah was directing Ava to delete this information. Those things were not discovered by Detective Mendez. You also get the full, you have um, David Gallant's full um, testimony about how he reviewed the full Selbright extraction. After Detective Mendez, David went down to San Antonio headquarters. He pulled that, he reviewed it, 
And he also confirmed, just like what Detective Mendez says, there was no, none of that that was ever discovered. Why don't you get to take this back there with you? Because we are guided, like Judge um, Boyd just read to you in the jury charge, we are guided by rules of evidence, rules of procedure, the Constitution of the United States. That is there to be able to provide levels of protection. Because Isaiah has the right to be able to confront the witnesses against him, we don't just get to get into these reports. Remember I asked you, can I question a report? No, I can only question the person that sits right there. So for that reason and many other legal reasons, these things are not gonna go back there with you. However, you still have your memory about the testimony that was given on the stand. The jury charge also speaks about the role of the jury. You, the jurors, are going to be the exclusive judges of the facts proved, the credibility of all of the witnesses, and the weight to be given to each of that testimony. You are bound by the law given by the court, but you are the judges of this case. You may not use electronic devices or media to do any additional research. Like we said at every single break by Judge Boyd, all of the evidence about this case comes from that witnessing and comes in this courtroom. You are not to let bias, prejudice, or sympathy play any role in your deliberation. You are here to see, did the prosecutors prove their case? If I make an argument or the state of Texas makes an argument that is not supported by the evidence, you are instructed to disregard that. So what is the evidence that we heard? Eight minutes. There was the beginning, middle, and end of Ava's story. The beginning started with the text messages of a flirtatious manner, the ones that Detective Mendez and David Gallant didn't find. It then later went to sexual encounters between the two of them. Then there was claims of additional text messages by Isaiah to delete the messages. Then everything was discovered. We have the beginning, middle, and end. Now there's a difference between cannot be corroborated, did not corroborate it, and was not corroborated. It is true that when there are, usually when there are sex acts between two individuals, there's only the two people that are there. That is true. And in this case, that is what Ava described. And the state of Texas cannot corroborate that story because they are not allowed to call Isaiah up to the stand to be able to testify. However, there was a lot more things that the detective, the state of Texas could have done to be able to corroborate her beginning, the middle, and the end. She talked a lot about these messages. I brought them up to you guys to be able to question it. It wasn't found. Credibility of the witnesses is everything when it comes down to this case. What lies did we hear from the testimony with Ava and Yolanda? They were withholding information. Stories were changed. They were giving different descriptions. At one point in time, when Yolanda was testifying for the prosecutors, she said, I remember everything. I remember everything clearly. But yet, when I go and cross-examine her, all of a sudden it becomes, well, that was four years ago. I don't remember what was going on. I can't even remember last week. When Ava comes up to testify, she tells you she's never spoken to the district attorney's office. The four years that this investigation went on, she never spoke to them. But when Yolanda comes up, it was at least 15 times. Why are we not telling the truth? Why are we not being forthcoming like Yolanda was instructing Ava to do? Now, I said, did she threaten you to come out of the hospital? Did she threaten you for you to get released because you did not want to be there, that you needed to tell this story? Ava says she motivated me. But what did Yolanda say? I didn't say anything. I never said that. 
But then later in her testimony, okay, well, you know, I encouraged her to be forthcoming. We have a range of, of lies, but then we get down to the complete lie, the lie of these text messages. I asked you during Vore Dyer, can the unreasonable ever become reasonable? That's what we're looking at here. When you start with this case and you start to hear everything, the idea that a 15 or 14 year old child, whichever version of Ava's story you believe, she went and created all of this stuff and came up with this story of having an affair or having a relationship with her older sister's boyfriend. It does sound far-fetched. It does sound like something that would come out of a Hollywood movie. However, when David Gallant came up here and testified, it is possible. It could have happened. David was trained in the Air Force. That's where he started over 20 years ago. He has he's been licensed investigator for 35 Five minutes. years. He's been certified. He's testified before. He came in and testified that he reviewed all of the information in Ava's cell phone, and it's not there. Coincidentally, all the people in 2020 that were in the house, nobody saw what was going on between Ava and Isaiah. Coincidentally, all of these messages, lots of messages were deleted. Coincidentally, she's having sexual relationship with Isaiah during the time when she was texting over 3,500 texts with Aiden while in going with um, Ava, she also said, we didn't text, we didn't use text message, we used other platforms. We used Google Duo because he didn't always have a phone. What we're talking about is limiting that opportunity that she's describing for the two of them to be together. There was a lot more Detective Mendez could have done and brought you in order to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. She didn't do that. She gives it to the state, and there's a lot more the state of Texas could have done, but they didn't do that. They followed in the detective's footsteps. They didn't bring in Circa. Circa lived here in San Antonio and still lives here in San Antonio. The state of Texas could have brought her in. Ava said it was because Circa didn't believe me, but that's not what the evidence showed. Yolanda and Maribel testified that when she found out about this, she was upset and she was crying. She believed Ava. She could have come in here and testified. What did she believe and when did it change? When did she have a different perspective on it? The state of Texas has to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. If you go back there in the, in the, for your deliberations, if you're still saying to yourself, it's possible they had a relationship. It's possible it's all made up. Could this other thing have happened? Could the text messages have been deleted? Could they never have existed? If you're still questioning that when you're back there in that room, that means there's reasonable doubt. And if there's reasonable doubt, that means that you must find Isaiah not guilty on all four counts. Thank you. Right to speak. Court defense. There can be no betrayal without trust. Ava and Yolanda had both known Isaiah for years. Since Ava was in elementary school, they trusted him. He was part of the family and he even fathered Nicola. He was family and they trusted him and he betrayed it. Now, before I go into how we know he betrayed her and how we know that Ava's telling the truth, let's talk a little about the defense's theories. Now, in order to believe them, 
that none of this happened, you have to make one massive leap. And you have to believe that Ava, at the age of 15, who we already know from her own words, had mental health issues at times. She had had a history of self-harming. She was in the middle of COVID, stuck, you know, going to school online, away from her best friend in Canada. She just moved here. That she had this brilliant idea to fake sexual Instagram messages between her and Isaiah and leave them on Circa's computer in the event that Circa would open this and, I don't know, destroy their relationship, get Isaiah in trouble. Who knows? But in order to believe that she made it all up, that's the first thing you got to believe, that she put this mastermind conspiracy into effect. Now, the only I reasons for some sort of motivation to lie are given by Isaiah to the detective. Saying, oh, she wanted attention. She was lying for attention. A, she didn't go and say all of this. She got caught and her world crumbled around her. We do know that she went along with his sexual advances for attention. She got on the stand and in tears told you, yeah, I liked the attention. What isolated 14 year old wouldn't like the attention and have a hard time saying no? Not a good reason to lie. The other possible motive to lie that Isaiah told the detective jealousy over her friend, some bizarre thing about, oh, my friend gets to party it up at 18 in Canada. Okay, nobody was partying, guys. It was COVID. She was going to be stuck either at her house or at Circus house, doing online school, babysitting Nikolai. That's bizarre. It's not a thing. Now, some bigger points that they want to make. Oh, this wouldn't have happened. Someone would have known. People were always home. And that's what Isaiah's mom came to testify about. I'm sure she was at that house often, but she didn't live there. She wasn't there every day. Ava wasn't there every day by her own words. And by her own words, Isaiah wasn't even there every day. He left often. He left for work. This is not something that happened every time they were all together. This is not something that happened every single day. It happened multiple times. But she never said that it happened, oh man, all the time. And we all know that someone being in the home does not prevent someone from having sex. Most of you have children. I guarantee, especially if you have more than one children, child, you've had sex while someone else is in the house and they didn't know about it. We all know it happens all the time. And keep in mind the nature of this. It's a 22 year old man with a child sleeping with a teenager, that's not gonna be a long drawn out affair. It's gonna be quick and they're gonna be silent and they're gonna make sure no one hears them. Of course, no one heard them. Not a good, not a good reason. There was some bizarre stuff about, oh, she texts her friends late at night. Who cares? I'm sure everybody else can text their friends all night, even on the nights they're having sex. Not a, not a thing. Their biggest point that they want to make is that the cell phone or the, the Instagram messages, the Snapchat messages, they weren't found. Correct. No one has ever said, oh, they were found. But their own expert got on the stand and said that when we're covering data that has been deleted, we have varying degrees of success. Varying degrees of success. There were stuff he said, yes, yeah, some deleted stuff was recovered, but obviously not everything. Not everything is going to be recovered every time. In fact, he told you that if a cell phone dump had been taken in 2020 and he did it again, now with the advanced technology, sometimes you're gonna recover more. That doesn't prove anything at that point that it wasn't there. No one's ever denied that they weren't found. The last thing I want to hit on is that this wasn't the best engagement investigation according to defense and Detective Mendez could have done more. She absolutely could have done more. And she knows that. She knows that. She said on the stand, I could have sent the preservation request for Snapchat. I didn't know they were good. Everybody who uses Snapchat 
uses it under the assumption if it goes away, it goes away. You're never going to see it again. A lot of you have used it and your children have used it. That's why people use Snapchat. Do not place the blame on a bad investigation on Ava. Ava is the one witness who can testify to all of the elements. And she is more than credible and you should be leave her beyond a reasonable doubt. Don't give her one more thing to blame herself for because she already bears that burden. Now Yolanda, when she got on the stand, told you that at first Ava denied it. She was shown these messages or she was confronted about the relationship. She denied it. Ava told you she denied it. She didn't want to get him in trouble. She didn't want to get the adult man who had started a sexual relationship with her in trouble because she cared for him. She lied to her mom and she told her it didn't happen. But Yolanda knew because a mother knows her daughter. And we talked about this in jury selection. You know when your kids are lying. You know when your kids are telling the truth. Yolanda knew that when she denied that relationship, that she was lying. So she got her help. Ava came in here. She poured her heart out. She talked about her pain, her shame, and her guilt. This is a girl who gains nothing. She gains nothing by coming in here and telling that same story when she's already lost Circa, she's already lost Nikolai, and it has torn that family apart. She gains nothing but negative attention. Is that something that a girl who's already had mental health issues wants? No, they want love and they want positive attention. Not, oh, we're gonna send you to San Antonio Behavioral Health. No, not, oh, we're gonna drag you into a courtroom full of strangers and call you a liar and have you be questioned about how you were taking advantage of as a child. Three minutes. No one wants that. I did agree with defense that this was a snowball effect, but the snowball was thrown by him. It started when he started messaging Ava and putting her in a compromising position and it started getting bigger when the first sexual event happened. Because after that, how do you stop it? You're just gonna do it more and more and there's no going back. She was terrified to tell someone because no one's gonna believe her. Or if they believe her, they're gonna call her names. They're gonna blame it for her. But now the big bam is here and it's to hold him accountable. Yes, there are pieces missing, but we all know it's a gun. We all know that he did this. Back there, ask yourself, do I have a doubt? Is it reasonable? But more importantly, was it about what Zach and I had to prove? Not, oh, did these messages exist or not? No, it's whether or not Isaiah had sex with Ava and put her through this. The answer is no, the verdict is guilty. It's time for this child to be told, we believe you, we will stand up for you, we will find him guilty. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Deputy uh, Laura is going to take you back. And I'm going to ask for two of you to remove it. If I can see you come to them specifically.
right, where's your client? They're bringing her out. Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Okay. But it is not a foundation. It's not. So much. Oh, yeah. I can help you if you do it. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not for an arrest. I knew that there were um, cases. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, the investigator do have a question about me. And she did. Oh, you yeah. two have yeah. records. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I didn't. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
their board dyers really threw me off and yours felt like really comfortable. Like we both were hitting our yeah, same yeah, topics no, exactly. and yeah, yeah. it just felt really familiar. So like, I was like, wild cards or what? the new people are freaking wild cards. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. What? What are you doing? It's like, that makes me scared to death. It's also awesome. making me scared to death. Did you hear us talk about snowball? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, wait. There we go. Are you all ready? All right. Come on up, Jasmine. I apologize. All right. We're going to go on the record. Hi. Hi. We're gonna go on the record in 2023, CR 8808, State of Texas versus Jasmine Hunt. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Zach Dunn for the state. Defense? Michael Collins, attorney for defendant, President Ray. Are you Ms. Hunt? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so the history of this case is the court accepted a plea. However, I thought that there were some mental health issues going on and I wanted her to be considered for the mental health court. The mental health court will only take you if you have not pled in a case. And I told parties that she was accepted in the mental health court, wanted to be in the mental health court and wished to withdraw her plea. The court would allow that. Is that a correct rendition of the history? It is, Your Honor. All right. So my understanding is she has been accepted. She has, Your Honor. And did she have her first meeting with them? They're going to, from here, they want to take over to the 379. Yeah. All right. So we're scheduled for the today. All right. Awesome. With the with the potential release of this evening, Your Honor. All right. So, with regards to her plea, are you requesting a new trial? I am, Your Honor. State, do you have any objection that his request is oral? No, Your Honor. No objections. All right. Any objections then to the uh, motion for new trial? No objections. Your All right. Then that will be granted.
All right, we're going to go off the record. So, Miss Hunt, this, you, you understand what's happening. You're going to be under the supervision of the mental health court. You must make sure that you follow everything that they're asking for you. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you have any questions about anything? No. Okay, anything else, counsel? No, Your Honor, I'm going to contact the person I've been dealing with, telling them they'll send them over to the 379. All right, and what I can tell you is the judge in the 379, if you have some issues, you can let him know. All right, and then, of course, you can always come back here. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, is there anything else? All right, thank you. Thanks, Your Honor. Appreciate You're welcome. it. And I think they're going to take her to the 379th. Yeah, so she's on hold for there. Okay. Yes. And you know why we have this question? Because of something somebody said in closing the arguments. We need your client here. Oh, I actually think I know exactly what this question I'm is. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I think the question is, where's the testimony? We want to read the testimony. Oh, and you know what? Jessica knew the person who it was related to. She's like, I'm sorry. Can I have the, the printout? They want to know. Huh? It's because I thought I had 30 minutes <laughs> for closing. Wait, Jessica, no. I don't know. I'm waiting on, I'm, what is, what's, yeah. All right, so. No, we're not on the record. 
the question is, are we allowed to review the transcript of the mother's testimony, Isaiah's mother? And so what I'm going to propose is I have received your note under the law. I cannot read testimony back to you generally. You must have a dispute about the testimony that you are asking about, and you will need to specify exactly what you are in dispute about. If the jury specifies as to what they are in a disagreement about with regard to the statement of any witness, then they may, upon application to the court, have read to them from the court reporter's notes just that part of such witness testimony at a particular point in dispute and no other. Is that going to be fine with you, defense? All right. We'll have your client come in, then we'll put this on the record. And... If you all want to see the note to see who the yes, I can't read the writing either, but that's okay. It's either Eric or Aaron Bella does. <laughs> no, I'm really bad at all. I know I can never guess who the uh, who's going to be. I was all excited with the. One juror, until so I found out he's an alternate. <laughs> Very expressive, I agree. Yeah. Did you have a feeling that's what it was before I got to you, Joe? Okay. Just because you just saw how everything, just each party, how they approached it, you just kind of feel like this is what this is what the question was going to be. No, no, she, no. I knew where it came from. She yeah. knew the she second knows. the words came out of my mouth. That yeah, going to happen. We're going to testimony.
We are on the record in 2021. Oh, please be seated. We're back on the record in 2021 CR 10130 State of Texas versus Isaiah Berju. Court has received the following question. Are we allowed to review the transcript of the mother's testimony? Isaiah's mother is in parentheses. Have both parties had a chance to review the juror's question state? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes. The court proposes the following supplemental charge. Members of the jury, I have received your note. Under the law, I cannot read testimony back to you generally. You must have a dispute about the testimony that you are asking about, and you will need to specify exactly what you are in dispute about. If the jury specifies as to what they are in disagreement about with regard to the statement of any witness, then they may, upon application to the court, have read to them from the court reporter's notes just that part of such witness testimony or the particular point in dispute and no other. Respectfully submitted Judge Stephanie Boyd, 187th Judicial District Court, Bear County, Texas. Any objections to that answer, state? Yeah, yeah. Defense. Any objection to having the deputy take this answer back to the jury or would you all like the jury to be brought back into the it's court? Fine either way, yeah. All right. Not me, Deputy Yes, Deputy Laura. <laughs> Laura. All right. Get back there. Yeah. Here, here you go. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you.